We are on the air. Excellent. Welcome to Pure Dog Talks Live at Five. I am your host, Laura Reeves. I am really, really excited to have everyone joining us tonight. We are going to be talking to my dear friend, Dr. Donald Sturz, president of the Westminster Kennel Club. And we're going to be giving everybody the 411, right? The complete rundown, everything from what's your best hotel to where's the best bathing area to all of it. All right. So while everybody's hopping on, we've got a couple items for the good of the order just here really briefly. In case you haven't heard, we've recently launched um, a really cool opportunity for listeners to access our archives. And I've done all the searching and hunting and pecking for you out of the 600 and I don't even know, 25 some odd episodes, only 200 or so of which you can find on iTunes or Spotify. The rest of them are in our archives and now are available in albums for the low, low introductory price of only a buck 99. <laughs> you can download an entire album on topics like breeding and whelping hands-on, the interviews. There's one in there with Dr. Dawn. Veterinary Voice, Love the Breeds, whole lot more. So as always, our success is your success. If you haven't yet, please do check out our exclusive patrons group. Your added perk is the Pure Pep Talk, a weekly text message that has just an upbeat, fun, educational little tidbit. You can sign up for the patrons group and the Pep Talk messages by going to puredogtalk.com backslash patrons. And for as little as $10 a month, get access to an amazing private Facebook group and all kinds of resources that aren't available to just the average person. I mean, $10 a month. That's like less than a, a frappet wappa thing at the coffee stand, right? All right. <laughs> Bottom line, your passion is our purpose. So check it all out at the website, puredogtalk.com. So now let's get this party started. Don, how are you? Hey, Laura. I'm great, Laura. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. I appreciate you staying up, joining us late, in, late at night on the East Coast. <laughs> so, it's Not all good. Your bedtime, right? Live from Only Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. So I had a bunch of listeners that sounded like they were really excited to come out to your dog show. Um, and they, they just had all the questions, like the, the questions that the first time person is always going to have. And I just couldn't answer them because I didn't show a dog there last year. You know, <laughs> So I figured I let's get the actual source on here. So great. Talk to us on what's what's your I know there's going to be a host hotel. What's your what do you think is the best hotel for the average person to get a room at? Are they all booked? I mean, how are we doing? Yeah, I was just going to say that that's a hard question to answer only because the the four host hotels are mm -hmm. actually all fully booked. And okay. um, so those okay. those people who were, you know, you know, lucky enough to, you know, be able to get in and get rooms there. You know, the one thing that I would say for, you know, the person who is, is new to the event at this venue, I would say make really good use of the Westminster shuttle buses that run every half hour from those host hotels. Um, you can take your dogs, your grooming equipment, everything you want can go on those shuttle buses because parking is challenging at the U.S. Tennis Center. And um, if you're, you know, if you can kind of, uh, maximize the benefit of having gotten into one of the host hotels you'll mm -hmm. your life will be a lot easier to just jump on the shuttle bus and jump off and it will drop you right at the grooming tent and your, your life will be very very simple um and you could do the same thing going back so that's that's so what about the people that didn't get into the host hotel can they drive and park there or take an yeah, Uber so, there and so i think shuttle? you know i think um you know a couple of options um the you know, you can, there's certainly parking um, when we have shuttles running from the parking lots. We also have valet parking available um, for okay. exhibitors. So you could unload, um, you know, your stuff and, and have your car parked for you. And then when you're done for the day and ready to leave, you, you know, you just wait for the valet to bring the car up for you. So there are those options, um, but it's certainly a perk, you know, for the shuttle people, you know, who are in the hotels. I wouldn't encourage people to drive to those host hotels because there's not very much parking there either. So the people who are probably That's staying at the hotel good. and not using their car are filling the hotel parking lot. So, you know, so there's okay. that. Um, okay. There are a lot Uber. of hotels. Uber is our friend, right? I'm sorry? 
Uber is our friend, right? Uber's your friend for sure. Absolutely. Parking lot A, tennis center, parking lot A, that's where you want to go. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. I think, you know, from the hotel point of view, even though the host hotels are full, you know, there are a lot of hotels in the area. And one of the things, you know, I think people were looking, you know, at hotels, you know, in the Flushing area or, you know, nearby. But um, a lot of people last year shared with me that they actually stayed in Manhattan. They stayed in Midtown and they really mm -hmm. found it real easy to get to the venue, the time, because the upside is, is if you're coming, if you're commuting from Manhattan, to Queens in the morning, you're actually going the opposite of rush hour. So the traffic is not so bad. And the exit for Grand Central off of the Long Island Expressway, which is what you would take from the Midtown Tunnel, it's one, you're one, you get off the LIE and you go one exit and you're right there at the tennis center. So, um, so that's something for people to consider or explore as well that, you know, may want to, you know, partake of activities in Manhattan and still be able to get to the show fairly easily. Um, Leaving staying yourself in plenty hotels, of time just in case, right? <laughs> just in case. And I was just going to say is, you know, the, the other side, you know, people staying, you know, on the Nassau County side of things, um, just be mindful of you are going to be going in with rush hour traffic heading into the city. And as anywhere, any large city, you know, traffic is traffic and you never know, right? Some mornings can be heavier than others. So you would always want to leave enough time. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So that was one big question, where to stay. Um, yeah. uh, people that were worried about it being safe and some of that, I, I mm. mentioned to you earlier, Denise Flame came on and did her Queen of Queens routine. And I thought that that <laughs> was a great, <laughs> I thought that was a great um, way for people to get an idea of some of the neighborhoods. Um, yeah. Welcome, Stefano. Um, we have a question from the, from the audience, Don. Stefano wants to know if the show is going to be aired like always. Yes, um, you know, we continue to be a partner with Fox Sports. And so Fox Sports will be showing it on um, FS1. Uh, it will also be um, live streamed on our YouTube channels as well for people to watch in you know, other parts of the world or who, those who don't have access to FS1. So yes, it would definitely be doing that. And um, you know, we have a great partnership with Fox and I think that they've really um, gotten this down as to how to present the dog show to both the public and the dog show uh, public and, and, and making it exciting and showing the dogs off, you know, to their best advantage. So, you know, we're excited about that. Um, the, I think the thing I'm most excited about actually with regards to um, all of this is, you know, we do have the live streaming of all the breed judging during the day you know, which is great. So people can tune in, you know, during the day, um, you know, they might be at their desk at work and, and, you know, inadvertently hit a button that takes them someplace to watch something that's happening. Um, anyway, so that live streaming is great. Um, you know, the, the master agility championship will air live on Sunday, which is also one really exciting. I'm going to get back to that the whole canine celebration day on su on Saturday. Um, but one of the things that we've not had before, and we literally, just found out today, so this is breaking, breaking news, news. <laughs> um, is um, we ha were able to uh, figure out a way for Fox to um, live stream the Junior Showmanship Finals. So I know everyone has always wanted it on the live broadcast, but it doesn't happen during the live broadcast, but we will be live streaming the Junior Finals for the first time ever. So Really exciting. That is so I mean, <laughs> Natalie did applause for us. <laughs> it so is. This I, is the, 90th, it's the 90th anniversary of Junior Showmanship. Yes. And so yes. this is a big deal for us. And, you know, we've got a lot going on, you know, to make it special for all of the juniors. We've got 104 juniors entered over the two days. And um, on Monday afternoon um, from three to five, we're um, having an actual um, anniversary celebration for our juniors who are competing. Um, they'll be um, escorted up to the presidential suite of the Arthur Ashe Stadium um, for a private party, uh, which will be fully catered and have some really cool surprises that this is all being um, sponsored by our partner Purina. And so we're really grateful to them for making that possible for our, our juniors. And um, we're also um, working on uh, creating something for Tuesday morning as well, maybe a little breakfast celebration. Um, I'm rooting for a cereal bar because it's the only time I actually get to eat Fruit Loops. So um, I'm working on that. 
Um, and uh, yeah, so this Can is- Can I so be there for the Fruit Loops? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, you, I'll get your I'll get your press pass. <laughs> yeah, so we're really excited about that whole piece for juniors, and uh, you know, it's, it, we're making a really big deal out of that. So yeah, you'll see lots of cool stuff. Awesome. And Courtney Bates has a question for you. When should we expect our info packets? Actually, that um, we just finalized the judging program last week, and so Mossbo has been in the process of. Um, stuffing those packets, you know, those of you who've been to Westminster before, um, you know, we, you know, we do it upright and you actually get, you know, a, a beautiful packet. It's filled with all kinds of information, including um, the judging program, um, the wristbands for exhibitors will be in those packets and so on. Those should be going out within the week. This week. Okay. Yeah. And remember, we're, we're six weeks out from the show, right? So we're, we're getting close. The, you know, the excitement is palpable and, and people are getting geared up, which I think is wonderful. And I, and I love when I hear that, um, you know, that, you know, people are, are really anticipating, you know, their Westminster experience, which is wonderful. They are. And I mean, these, we're getting all kinds of, we can't even get to talk about what I wanted to talk about because people have questions. So the car <laughs> services. The car services, like the the Ubers and all that, do they drop off at the same location as the shuttles? Yes, yeah, and that's why I said when you when you take the Uber, um, the I would say have the Uber drop you and pick you up at parking lot A. That's where the shuttles right. drop and pick off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Janet Oatney, press releases for exhibitors to use in home paper. Oh, this is a great one. She said yeah. she thought she saw a post about uploading info about your dog, but couldn't find it again. Do we have those? Is that a thing this year? Yeah, that's absolutely a thing. Um, I would I would access the website first. Um, when we last talked, when we were you know literally in the frozen say. tundra of Portland, I mentioned that we were going, you know, very close to launching our new website and mm -hmm. the, the website did launch and I hope yes. people have gotten a chance you know, to experience it. Um, you know, I had a complete facelift and um, that kind of information is actually all there on the website. And if, we'll if you're having website, trouble so finding it, then just call the office. You know, we've, we've, our office staff can help you navigate that. But yeah, thank you for asking because that's really an important part of the experience is you know, Westminster is, you know, an international, you know, media phenomenon. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, so often, you know, you know, local news wants to tell the stories, you know, of the dogs and the people who are going to the event, you know, so I think it's really important. So thanks for bringing that up. And, and, and definitely. That was a great one, Janet. Um, yeah, Tammy you. Cole, what channel is it on? FS1 changes. It's a different channel in different um, places, right, Don? Yeah, so I would. I'm going to stick with it's on Fox. It's FS1. That's that is the channel that it will air on. And the Agility Championship on Sunday will be on FS2. Okay, okay. So just in case we were already not confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What new breeds? What new breeds do we have this year? Oh, this is a great story. So, um because I kind of got into a little bit of trouble over this. So um, the newest breed should be right. <laughs> the newest, <laughs> this is, this is we're, we know each other too well and are too friendly. So I get totally relaxed, which is probably my Westminster staff is watching is probably all cringing because they're like, oh no, it's no, that they're gone. No, they're not. This is real, Don. And this is why people love your dog talk because real people talk about real stuff. So this is real. <laughs> So okay, John got so, in trouble. No, I can't imagine yeah. how that could have happened. <laughs> yeah. So the Lancashire Healer um, just got recognized as a new breed in January. And so when we started, you know, talking about things that regard, you know, with regards to, you know, PR and, you know, signage at the show and everything, I made the statement that it's not likely that there will be a Lancashire Healer because the entries close February 23rd and it would be highly unlikely that a dog will finish its championship that quickly. I literally said that. So we ended, we've got a Lancashire healer. And, and so that of course, then unfortunately, you know, opened a real can of worms because, you know, as everyone knows, you know, there's, you know, all of the anxiety around getting entries in, right. And all the speculation, we talked about that in, in, um, 
in Portland, you know, of how the entries, you know, get in and the right. lottery process and so on. And so as it would turn out, um, there were a few Lancashire healers that finished their championships and submitted their entries, but because of the, you know, the lottery system, you know, there was only one that actually got in. We on Westminster side were thrilled, like we're really, really thrilled that there, we have a Lancashire healer that's I'm going to participate in, um, in our show. And we actually have um, our press preview on May 1st in New York City. And, and, and we've got a Lancashire healer coming to join us. And so we're, we're really excited to celebrate the breed for sure. That is amazing. Okay, so that's that's our new breed this year, the Lancashire Healer, which are very cute little dogs, by the way. There's a there's a podcast for that if anybody hasn't yeah. seen it. Um, how how does the grooming? <laughs> this has been the biggest question. How does grooming work for the people that only have one dog, like the not the handler grooming, but the yeah. person that's coming in with one dog? It's not benched. So how is this working this year? Sure. So um, we have two um, huge grooming tents and. Um, the, you know, there's, we really made, um, that a priority with regards to, um, the experience of the dogs, the experience, hold please while I turn my phone off. There we go. Um, the, the ease with which people can unload into the tents, they literally pull right into the parking lot, whether they're in their car or from the shuttle. Um, they, you, you literally pull in and that's where the grooming tent is. Um, the, you know, there's, there's one that is, a, is attached to the outdoor rings, which are all covered. Right. Everything is tented. So although the tennis center is an outdoor venue, we have transformed it into a completely um, covered event. Um, and so there's, um, there's plenty of room within the two grooming tents. There's one that's right next to that ring. And then there's another grooming tent that extends into that parking lot A. Um, and um, both, uh, both tents are floored and turfed, so it's comfortable. And um, plenty, 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 plenty of space and lots of electricity. Um, yeah, it, there's every, there, yeah, there's so much electricity available. Um, our uh, senior director of operations, Paul Campanella does a great job with attending to all of those details that matter to exhibitors. And that was one of they them. Matter. So no one should have problem they finding matter. that. <laughs> um, bathing. Cause I know Paul, he's going to have, he's going to have tubs. Where are the bathing tubs? So there aren't, there are no, there are no bathing tubs. At, the, okay. at this venue but what we what we did want to be able to do was to provide access to water for those of, of us who you know show dogs when there weren't bathing facilities you know there was this thing where you had little plastic tubs and you wash the dogs at the grooming table right and so um so we're kind of looking at it you know from that point of view in that um you know we will provide um gallon jugs of poland spring water and so, you know, only at Westminster would you wash your dog's feet with distilled Poland spring water, correct? So that's, yeah, so that's what we have. That so there so are amazing. thousands of these I'm jobs. Not that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo yeah. I love that so much. Westminster. Okay. So, Westminster. <laughs> table bath your yeah, dog, so bring tubs, y'all. You can, I'm going to tell you, here's a little packing tip as someone who's done it. Table baths are super easy. You get two of those little Rubbermaid kitchen sink tubs. You stack them together. You get two sponges. You get your Poland Springs bottled water from Westminster Kennel Club. And and if you're really cool, you can pack one of those little um, um, hot water tea kettles and you can heat your water so you can even have warm water for your bathing out your, you your dog's feet, beards, pee feathers, all that kind of good stuff. So. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I can. So I have to tell you the story about when Westminster was in Manhattan. I brought the clumber and he yes. wanted to go for a walk. I, you just created a new ad for Poland Springs <laughs> and he wanted to go for a walk. So I walked him. I did. I walked him all the way down to Central Park and back. And it was like an Oreo. <laughs> he was white on the top of him and black. I mean, black on the bottom of it. Oh, yeah. That taught yeah. me a good lesson. Don't take your clumber for a walk without an outfit in New York. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Marilyn has a question. Is it going to be televised? Yes. We said it's going to be on FS1. Yeah. What day does it start? Yes. The agility will be um, televised on FS2 on this, Sunday. On, is that right? Lot, I think I actually, I, I think agility actually is on Sunday on, on Fox sports. Fox sports. Okay. Um, yeah. And then the um, confirmation events on Monday and Tuesday evening are from 7.30 to 11 on FS1. Um, the breed judging during the day, um, there's a um, live broadcast on FS2 from one to four on Monday and Tuesday. Okay. And then there's live streaming of every breed as they're being judged, which you can access through the website. So, so you've got, got lots Club of ways to Club access Westminster. And it will say live streaming yes. and you can go right there and watch yes. it. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Okay. Okay. So the big question, it's a really big question. Mm. Did you get the new carpet? <laughs> oh, you remembered. Yeah. You remembered. Okay. So, mm -hmm. la so last time we talked, I had like six or seven squares of turf, right? And so to catch everybody up. So, you know, one of the things that's, you know, always been, you know, an issue is an issue for any indoor event, honestly, is the surface, right? Do we mat? Do we not mat? Do, is it is it carpet? Is it not carpeted? And so, um, you know, back in the day, you know, when the total event was at Madison Square Garden, it was carpeting. And, um, and the complaint was always that it's too slippery, right? People were slipping when they're running. When you're stacking the dogs, everybody was soaking their dogs pads because the feet are slipping on the carpet, right? So, so that wasn't you know universally loved um with the advent of agility you know coming into um the westminster experience um the need for something with traction and more turf life you know came into play and you know with the fact that the agility was happening in the same you know venue as the breed judging and, and the time it takes to you know break down and set up basically the decision was made okay we're going to go with turf right for the rings and so, you know, over time, you know, initially the turf was a little rough, you know, back in the day, you know, it hasn't, hadn't been refined, you know, at that point. And, um, you know, I think it was, you know, it was rough on dogs' pads. It was definitely rough on people's knees, um, you know. Um, so over time, this has, you know, been shared over and over again. It's like one of the complaints that comes forward is like, oh, the turf, right? So we actually... Um, partnered with a company called Field Turf, which um, is going to be the official turf company for Westminster Kennel Club. And Field Turf does um, uh, the uh, turf for a lot of major um, athletic organizations. And so it's it's the real deal. And they, nice. they sought us out. They wanted to be associated with Westminster, which is really cool. So great. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so like fi I finally got picked in a sport. Yay! Um, <laughs> I just um, always laugh for dodgeball. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so yeah, so so we we've got brand new turf, and so when we last talked, I talked about the samples. You know, they sent us squares of samples, and so in the Westminster office, we literally were doing surface testing and so people were you know pressing their hands on it and kneeling on it and we were like taking data like what do you think which is which one do you like best which one's most comfortable which one is comfortable it still has traction you know that sort of thing and so we we ended up with a version of turf that you know we felt was still was going to provide enough traction for the agility dogs but would and for the confirmation dogs as well for that matter right they're running they're stacking um, but would be a little bit easier on pads and a little easier on knees. And so, I, I, I mean, turf is turf, so it's not going to be, you know, perfect. It's not but it's grass. definitely it's not going to be. Yeah, but it's definitely an improvement and definitely a step in the right direction. And I hope people take it as, you know, Westminster listening, right? And that we, you know, we heard and we tried and, and, and we came up yeah. with what we think is a really great solution. So, yeah, so we're excited awesome. to see how that all rolls out. Excellent. I can't wait to see it. Um, we do have the obligatory, when do we go back to the garden? <laughs> That's the question on my screen, man. Yeah. So, so the, you know, that, um, that is clearly, um, been the vision and the hope, um, you know, we're, we're marching towards the 150th anniversary in 2026 
And I think it would make for a wonderful story if Westminster was to return to its home in Madison Square Garden, you know, for its 150th anniversary. Um, the, you know, the, the real deal with all that is in order, Madison Square Garden got remodeled and which is why we had to go to the piers. There is no place to have the daytime events in Madison Square Garden any longer. So the only thing it can provide for us is the evening event, meaning indoor venue in Manhattan during the day. And so if you live in New York City, you would know that indoor large venues are at a premium. They just don't really exist. And so um, the piers, because people will just go back to the piers. Well, the problem is Pier 92 fell into the river and Pier 94 is being remodeled and is being changed into smaller units. It'll no longer be an exhibition space. So they are not an option for us. And so we're, you know, we're looking at other options for daytime with the goal being for groups and best in show to be in Madison Square Garden. And I expect to be able to, um, you know, be able to announce, you know, dates, venue, judging panel, um, right after the 2024 event is completed. So stay tuned. <laughs> that's, that's a move up from when we talked in January. That's yes. good. I like it. Yes. <laughs> okay, this is like two breaking news items in one night. I can hardly there stand <laughs> it. <laughs> um, so Jonte, hi Jonte. Um, Jonte wants to know if there's classes and seminars for people that come to attend. That's a really great question. Yeah, really great question. And so on Saturday, um, there is what we um, refer to as our canine celebration. And so on that day, the Master Agility um, Championship, the um, Obedience Championship is taking place. We have a breed showcase that'll feature nearly 50 breeds of dogs, um, which we're really excited about. We doubled it from last year. Um, because it was so well received. We're going to have a demonstration ring that's being sponsored by Cosequin, and that will have herding demonstrations, scent work demonstrations, um, obedience demonstrations, and what we call Dog Show 101, um, which is um, you know basically explaining what's going on in the ring, right? Because so often people come to watch confirmation and, and don't quite understand you know what the judge is looking for or why the dogs are doing what they're doing and, and so on. So um, that's always been really helpful and has gone over well. So so Saturday is if you're looking for information in that way, Saturday is probably the day for you to you know come and get that type of information. I'm just going to put it out there. I think adding a day of seminars would be really cool. <laughs> you know what? That's a possibility as we move forward. <laughs> um, <laughs> Joelle, hi Joelle. Joelle wants to know if it's allowed to live stream with their phone, like their own dog. It, at the um, show, like we, if I'm there watching my dog, can I can I live stream my own dog to my own Facebook or what have you? Um, I'm going to say the answer it would be no. Um, in that you know we you know have a um, a media you know contract you know with Fox and Fox is who does all of the live streaming during the day so that will be my standard answer on that right good answer <laughs> um, Kermit the dog hello Kermit the dog I saw him post up on your Westminster Facebook page welcome can we create our dogs in the grooming area? when attending other events such as Best in Show? Can they keep their dogs in grooming all day? Yes, absolutely. Um, the, you know, the, um, the dogs on, on well, the, I'm gonna say this with a caveat. They are able to be under the tent all day. The Monday exhibitors dogs can be in the tent till six. And then the Tuesday dogs will be arriving at six. And so we ask that people move out by six o'clock. So that does create a little bit of a challenge for people wanting to watch the groups on Monday night, for sure. But it's the only way that we can get those Tuesday exhibitors in and set up so that they're ready for 8 a.m. judging on Tuesday morning. Yes. For sure. Okay. So in answer to your question, Kermit, you can have them there until six and then gotta, gotta load out so everybody else can load in. Um, yeah. Barb Perez, welcome. Hi. Go ahead, Don. And I would, I would just say with that as well as remember, it's not a benched event. So, you know, they, you know, if you're staying at hotels and stuff and you want to take the dog back to the hotel and come back and watch the rest of the show, that's an option too. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Barb would like to know if visitors, spectators are allowed to visit the grooming area like years ago and talk to the handlers and meet the dogs. 
absolutely. And, and we encourage that for sure. Um, again, Saturday Canine Celebration Day would be a great day for that because of, you know, we have the breed booths and, and all that going on. But absolutely, you know, uh, people are free, you know, to walk, you know, through the grooming tents. Just be mindful and respectful, you know, of the exhibitors and their dogs. And, and sometimes, you know, people are getting ready to go in and they're, they're nervous and they've got a job to do and they're getting dogs ready and they might not be ready to talk at that time or they might not be comfortable with dogs being their dogs being touched at that time. But most people are very amenable to that once the competition is over. So I would say that would be fine. And then we've got a lot of um, new things coming into the um, courtyard area. And you know, outside Arthur S. Stadium, um, mm -hmm. there, there's a big fountain and you've got the view of the uh, World's Fair globe in the background. Mm -hmm. And that's where we have the big statue of sensation. So great photo op. Um, situation. Um, we've also partnered with the Museum of the Dog this year, and they're coming in with a digital art installation. Um, so it's going to be an immersive, interactive art experience, which will be really, really cool. We also have um, Dog TV coming to, uh, they're also creating um, an interactive experience, you know, with their setup, which will be, which will be fun. And, um, Cherry Brook. Pure Dog Talk uh, will be there, just so you know. Pure Dog Talk will be there. Pure Dog Talk will be there. Okay. Pure Dog Talk will be there. <laughs> Find me at the Purina um, booth. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, Purina will be a huge presence. Um, yeah, they're yeah. our presenting sponsor, and so they've got prime real estate um, right yes. next to the Westminster store. Um, so, you know, uh, shop early, shop often at the Westminster store. The merch flies out of there it. really it's quick. Fine. It is. There you, you go. Could thank, have you. A thank you. Almost as cool as thank mine you. if I could only just get it in front of the <laughs> yeah, we've, we've got, um, we actually got just, it. we're working on that. And, you know, we've got, you know, a lot of, a lot of things that have been big sellers in the past will return, but we've also got new stuff, you know, so it's, it's definitely worth the visit. And um, Cherry Brook, as I was mentioning, you know, which, um, you know, is our dog supply, you know, equipment supply for all things that you forget to bring to the dog show, right? Um, they're offering a really cool service. They're setting up a QR um, uh, pre-order system at the show. So say you're in the tent um, and you can put your order into Cherrybrook and they'll have somebody deliver it right over to you at your grooming table under the tent. So that's pretty fun and cool. What? Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How is this not a thing when we were showing dogs, Don? Right. I know. It's just know. not acceptable. Yes. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, so that's going to be cool. So they, they, they'll they set that. it up as in a delivery system or they'll have it ready for you to run over and pick up so you don't have to stand online or you don't have to go look for it. And so I thought that was a really cool um, service to offer. genius. Absolute yeah. genius. Okay, um, we're, hi, we're, Myron. We've got, yeah, so that courtyard is going to be a Myron here, Don. Let me ask real quick, because um, this sure. is a good question. How early can we get to the venue, and when does the parking lot open? 6 a.m. Yeah, you can start arriving at 6 a.m. Yeah, that's when the and gates And Monday exhibitors open. can set up Sunday night. Is that correct? Yeah, um, exhibitors can um, set up in the grooming tents. Uh, Monday exhibitors can will be opening that grooming tent up at three o'clock p.m. on Sunday. On Sunday, okay. Yep. Beautiful. And what color turf so we can plan our outfits? Thank you, Janet. <laughs> You're speaking my language. That's a question oh, I would yeah. ask. It's, exactly. it's Westminster Green. It's Westminster Green. Absolutely, yep. Westminster Green. <laughs> Just so, just so everybody knows, a little pitch for the podcast. Be watching in a couple of weeks. I just did an interview with a gal who has, you know, a clothing booth, right? And she does helps people select their outfits. And she, we did a whole episode on what to wear to Westminster, and hair, and nails, and makeup, and yeah. shoes, and all the ties, and all the stuff. So it's a, it's a thing, and it's so much it's of a, a thing. thing. This is, a, this is a, a great segue. Um, Another partner for us this year that's new is J. Crew, and J. Oh, Crew is I swear to God. So they reached out. They they are out. Only you, be, Don. Only yeah. you. <laughs> they're gonna, they're going to be outfitting some of our handlers and judges and juniors, and what? um, they're yeah, and they're going to be promoting the show on their social media pre-show, and yeah, so it's um yeah, so that's kind of fun and exciting as well. Fantastic! I yeah. love that. That is amazing. All right, what else we got, Nat? 
<laughs> that is amazing. That is truly amazing. These are great questions. I, I mean, they're really great questions. I know. There's, I, we, there's a bunch of people here who want to know some stuff, Don. All right. Andrea. Uh, Andrea would like to know, would you guys kindly show more of the toy group? I think that you guys should rotate every year so that everybody gets to see their favorite breed. Um, actually, every breed is shown, um, mm -hmm. and and you know I don't I know there are a few different events that appear on television that aren't um, the where same. The as only, where the only live televised dog show event, and and every dog and every group is given the same exact amount of time, and every breed is shown in its total examination and gating. So I can assure you, whatever breed you want to watch in that toy group on TV, you will see it on the Westminster live broadcast on Fox. Sports. Absolutely, you will. <laughs> I, I I miss the days of the garden when I had my little press box spot right here. That's <laughs> so great. Yes. It was a good one. Okay, Adriana, hello, writing from Chile. Oh my goodness, welcome. Uh -huh. Will there be a platform for people outside of the U.S. to watch the show apart from Fox? You would suggest the YouTube. The YouTube, yes. Um, you know, it, we um, we make every effort to make it ex as as accessible as we can internationally, and so the YouTube, the Westminster YouTube channel, would be the place to access it. So Westminster Kennel Club website. Go to it'll. I assume it's not there now, but it will be when the show's happening. No. Right, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful. Hi, Cameron Simpson, my friend. She, Cameron just wants to shout out that she loves the Flushing Meadows location. Will it remain there for years to come? Well, there's the flip side, Don. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the flip side, right? Because it, you know, I think it's a very exhibitor friendly experience, you know. Oh, so um, much. The, the, you know, the, you know, from the Westminster side of things, as it would be for any event, you know, being outdoors in May in New York is a real gamble. It could be hot, it could be cold, it can be wet, it can be dry. Um, and uh, and that's something that, you know, an event like Westminster really is not comfortable with that kind of gamble um, long-term. Just, I'll just be honest. Um, that being said, if, if a daytime venue in Manhattan is not available to us at some point, we feel like the tennis center is our great plan B because it, it is a really cool setting. And I think that we put to rest when we initially announced it and everybody's like, oh my God, how can you do a dog show at the tennis center? Like, I think we proved everyone wrong on that because I think we put an it. amazing dog show there. Um, and, um, you know, if there was a way for it to all be indoors, you know, that would probably be our home. Um, you know, the other thing is it's hard to get New Yorkers, you know, to, to get out there on a weeknight. You know, it's, it's easier for, uh, you know, somebody who lives in Manhattan um, because of perception. But I will tell you this, um, you know, anybody you know, who's either, you know, coming from afar and staying in Manhattan, it's really easy to get to the tennis center. You can, um, you know, jump on the seven train um, from Grand Central Station and you're, and it lets you off right there. It's got its own stop. Long Island Railroad, right from Penn Station. It's got its own stop. I think so all the lots people of ways in to Queens get there where you don't have to know get the big dog show is in their backyard. That's the other thing I think. Queens yeah. needs to know y'all are there. Yeah, and that's you know one of the things that we um, put a lot of effort into this year was um, attempting to connect with the Queens community, and so we worked very closely with the Queens Tourism Bureau and okay. um, the Queensboro President's Office, and they helped us a lot with a number of things. Um, one being you know, facilitating, you know, some access to parking that we've not had before. And, um, you know, just reaching out to, um, you know, youth groups and schools and, and that sort of thing, and really trying to, you know, um, as you say, engage the community. Yeah. And yeah. Um, because yeah. we want everyone there celebrating the dogs like we do. Um, you know, it's, yeah. you know, I, I've been um, talking it up wherever I go. And, um, you know, we, we had a meeting today and, you know, we were, you know, talking about, you know, how do we, you know, get more, you know, spectators to come and, and you know, see the show. And, uh, you know, that was one of the things that we talked about was, you know, just, you know, providing tickets to, you know, to boys and girls clubs. And, um, you know, there's the tennis center has its own youth organization. So we want to provide them with tickets because they'll bring their families. And, you know, I, um, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, that's, to me, that's, you know, so key, you know, is getting, you know, 
youth interested and involved in the sport because that's what maintains it going forward, you know, and its future is to have young people coming up, you know, who are involved in it and, and, and so on. Like one of my favorite memories from last year was a little boy, you know, was watching with his mother and I, I just happened to stop and, and, you know, he, you know, tugged her and looked up at her and he said, mommy, can I do that someday? And I'm, and I'm like, that's it. Like that's the yeah. moment, right? It just, it, it's in that little boy's head. He wants to do that someday. He wants to run around that green turf with a dog someday. And you know what? I, I hope he does. I hope he does too. And that is the perfect segue to our next question. Uh, Stephanie, hey, Stephanie. Um, she would like to know when uh, the juniors will hear which day they show. I assume that's in their show packet that's being mailed this week. And how much are additional tickets for extra family members? that that's a um i don't remember the price of the tickets off the top of my head because the unfortunately going through um to be able to buy tickets for any event at the tennis center has to go through Ticketmaster, and as we know there's always fees and so on um but if you have any questions you can always call the westminster office with regards to things like that the you know with when it comes to juniors we um we provide a ticket for the junior and two family members um so that should suffice, but if there are extra family members and tickets need to be bought, that can all be done, you know, through the uh, the Ticketmaster. You can get the link on the uh, Westminster website as well. Okay, so Andrea, there's the answer to your question. You can purchase t- tickets to be a spectator at Westminster Kennel Club. It's dot org, dot org. right? Don? Dot org. <laughs> yep. Dot org, and that'll that you'll see the link there to purchase the tickets through Ticketmaster. Yep. Oh, this is a really good question. Chrissy would like to know if they can bring dogs on Saturday to the activities that will be competing in confirmation. Like if you're not running in agility, but you just want to have your dog with you while you watch agility or, you know, do some of the other stuff, are they allowed to bring their dogs with them? No, because it, it, it would be very difficult for us to police that as far as who is coming in as a spectator with their dog and versus an exhibitor coming in for the day with their dog. Um, mm-hmm. We have to be really mindful of, of keeping it um, orderly and safe for everybody who's participating and um, you know that the only way we can do that is to assure that the only dogs on the grounds at any given time are the dogs that are participating in the events that day. On and that so, day. Okay. On that day. Okay. All right. Well, there's your answer. Kermit the dog. As an exhibitor, we have one additional wristband for a second person question mark. My car, my partner is coming to help with Kermit the dog. <laughs> Do you get <laughs> the, 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 the name of the person posting is Kermit the dog. So apparently there's two people to go with Kermit the dog and which, they want to know if there are two wristbands. There's a, definitely a, an exhibitor wristband. I think I believe that there are two, but don't hold me to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, on-site they will, parties. They are also in the packet because we had to choose bands that fit smoothly in the packet and and didn't cause any difficulty with the postal system and the mailing. So I'm very <laughs> familiar with these wristbands. Um, but and I believe it's I believe it's two wristbands per dog. Okay. Um, hey, are don't there hold me any to that. gatherings that are being held, like exhibitor gatherings or parties that will be actually on site at the tennis center? Um, any, like I know in the past, some of the dog magazines have had, you know, the Canine Chronicle party and stuff like that. Do you know anything about any of those? I do. Pure Dog Talk I is do. not rich enough to host one. Sorry, dude. <laughs> I do. Um, the the Museum of the Dog, who I mentioned, yeah. is doing a, um, a garden party soiree on um, Monday oh. evening from four to six, and that has at. been um, that is right there at the tennis center, and it's um, that they're going to be serving um, what they refer to as heavy hors d'oeuvres, meaning. Okay. It's dinner, right? Like it's not a sit down dinner, but there'll be the kind of hors d'oeuvres that you can, you know, satisfy your appetite and then go watch the groups. That was the point of that event. And are we paying in advance? Are we buying tickets for that? How does that be managed? You you buy tickets through the Museum of the Dog. Yep. And we should do that in advance, I assume? Yeah, I would. Yes, I would definitely do that. Um, And so there's there's that event. Um, Cosequin is um, sponsoring um, exhibitor hospitality. Um, right there, um, it's right above the actually the Westminster store, and um, which you know we're really excited about that because one of the things that's a challenge for us as well is that 
although the tennis center has lots of eatery options, they don't open up for us because right. it's just economically not feasible for them to open a restaurant for two days. Um, mm -hmm. These are all privately owned restaurants. And so, mm -hmm. you know, they open up for the US Open for weeks, you know, for the go of it. And, uh, but they can't do that for us. So we, don't, we have a couple of, um, you know, vendors that open up, you know, for food on site. We went as a team to the US Open last year to see the venue, you know, as it's used, right? Mm -hmm. And we got a lot of great ideas, one of which was um, accessing the, um, some kiosks and carts, food kiosks and food mm -hmm. carts. So, um, so the tennis center was really helpful in trying to facilitate that for us. And um, I think I shared in Portland, like I came away, I was like, the one that was most important to me was the gelato guy. I'm like, gelato. I need the gelato <laughs> guy. Um, so, um, so there's a guy with a cart that, you know, sells gelato. So it's things like that. And um, I was just speaking to somebody yesterday in an interview and they said, well, the, you know, the kiosk and the cart sounds so great because that's a true New York City experience, you know, is, is that food on the go on the streets kind of thing. So, so I think that can be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, and so, so we've got a, a number of things and, you know, we'll again do our um, our complimentary morning coffee for exhibitors, you know, outside the rings. And um, I don't, I, I keep forgetting to mention that, you know, there's, we've got the, you know, six outdoor rings that are, you know, fully tented and turfed, but we also have three rings indoors inside Arthur Ashe Stadium. I meant to ask you about that in January. I'm like, what do they even do inside? Because I never even made it inside. I was so busy doing other stuff so last year. I'm like, what's even in there? Yeah. Three rings inside in the arena, and um, those, uh, you know, it's toys on uh, Monday and it's terriers on Tuesday. And those rings finish up fairly early. Um, we schedule them specifically that way to be able to break that all down and get those get the arena set for group judging in the evening. So those indoor rings are are done typically by two o'clock in the afternoon. Excellent. Okay, Audrey, we were just answering your question about more food options. There's food carts, including gelato, the most important. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have a question. Um, will there be a, an ability to have alcohol be served there? Will there be any kind of thing? Somebody says asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Is there going to be like a bar, man? <laughs> These are dog people. Yeah. Come on. Actually, there's going to be an outdoor bar in the courtyard. Yes, that's what it'll I'm talking down, about. It'll be down on the end um, by where the Museum of the Dog will be and um, where our um, publications, um, Dog News, Canine Chronicle, um, Show Site, their tents, Take the Lead, AKC, all nice. on that end. Nice. Yep. There's a bar down there. So, um, so go get a drink and then go visit our friends. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Um, speaking of our friends, I have to tell you, Jason Hoke just dropped by to to note that maybe j crew will design a nice new tuxedo for his nighttime wardrobe <laughs> <laughs> hi jason <laughs> wow. wow hey jason i know <laughs> i know right i'm saying <laughs> um hi deb deb Lindsay wants to know um are the outdoor tents over rings larger this year as there was no coverage for outside rings in case it rains, I think I think the question that she's asking: are, Do the do the tents cover more than just the rings? Like if you're sitting in the no. stands, okay, they, all right. So that's they, still the same. They they do not. Um, okay. One what we did do though was to look at if if any of you were there. Um, yeah. There's um, there's a, a there's a section of space that was not tented. This is where my OCD kicks in. Is things like this. So there was this where you walked into the in the entry of each of those ring areas the courts right the entrance to the courts mm -hmm. there was you know a good amount of space that was not covered and so my brain went immediately to two things one we had you know beautiful days and it was sunny and it got hot and so let's create more shade right let's mm -hmm. cover it and then my other brain went to oh you know if this was me showing my miniature poodle and it was raining I would be having a coronary. The fact that she'd have to be in the rain to get to the oh, rain. Right so, yeah. um, so, so those sections are now going to be covered. So, you know that oh, that whole for the dogs and the exhibitor. That's right. that's our primary focus, yeah. and um, you know, just trying to make sure that they're you know they're they're comfortable and and safe mm -hmm. and 
you know, all of that. So all about the dogs. It's always all about the dogs. It's never gets yes, to be and about it. And it would be great. I mean, you know, I, we actually, you know, we've talked about, you know, this notion of, um, you know, tents over the spec taters areas and so on but um you know it does it's quite an expensive venture to do what we are doing and um you know it's uh you know there's just you know there's a point where we have to say as much as we'd love to be able to do some things it's just not you know feasible you know to pull it off so yeah no i hear that um quick question from carol hi carol lauren um do you need to buy tickets to watch groups yes um, yeah. And so, um, yeah, you definitely need, there's a daytime ticket and then there's an evening ticket. And so um, the evening tickets, um, good news or bad news, I guess, good news for a lot of people, not such good news for Carol. Um, Tuesday <laughs> night, the, the lower bowl is actually, I think, essentially sold out, which oh, is geez. great. Okay, which That's is fabulous. great. So we've opened up the next level. Um, last year we had both levels opened up, and so and then you know there was the issue of like there were empty seats, and so we started this year with just selling the lower bowl first for both nights. And so there's only it, it's nearly sold out that lower bowl for Tuesday night, but there are now we opened up the second tier, so okay. there are tickets available for that. And then um, the uh, on Monday night there are definitely still tickets available, which is always the case even when we were yeah. in madison square yeah. garden the crowd That's is always larger always. on tuesday yeah. than it is monday night yeah but we're trying to you know keep keep people condensed into that lower bowl until it's full and then we move up to the next tier mm -hmm. um julie has a question i think i know the answer to i think don just answered it um exhibitor armband provides entrance to all events including the groups no correct if if you're an exhibitor unless you won the breed you still need to buy your ticket yeah, there's um, there's going to be a, a there's a general admission section um, in the group judging. Um, we wanted to make sure that exhibitors had good seats, um, mm. you know, and um, so that that will work out for people um, is from that point of view. But yes, tickets should be should be purchased. Okay, there you go. That's the answer to that question. How are we doing, Natalie? Do we have more questions? This has been a big night. This has been a full group. Everybody's got stuff they want to know. Yeah, it's really good. Really good questions. It's, yes. No, it's great. Adrian, how you doing? Um, could we get the spelling of Legato Romagnolo corrected on the group box? I'll 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 take that to the superintendent and see what's on there now. <laughs> it, apparently, it's spelled R A M A instead of R O M A on the. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll I'll definitely I'll share that with Moss Bow. <laughs> Thank you. I had not noticed that, so there you go. There you go. There's an informational opportunity for us, Don. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we got over here. Oh my goodness. There's all, well, I've, I've had my chat like turned off and been counting on Natalie. So I'm just making sure. Um, okay. Let's see. Dogs and gelato. Yes, Pam Bruce. There's going to be dogs and gelato. One <laughs> <laughs> of your judges is watching. Hey, hey Pam. <laughs> hey, Pam. <laughs> We've got lots of, Jenny Line says hi. We got bunches hey, of people Jenny. here. Yeah, I know my fave. Um, okay. Well, I think that looks like the bulk of what we have um, for this evening. Dawn, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you taking this time. And, and not just because you're a busy guy with an incredible amount on your plate, but because you are so genuinely enthusiastic about this and about our sport and it makes my heart happy oh thank you i appreciate that laura it's uh, it is it's it's been my life passion and uh i have westminster in my blood and uh i just i love the excitement around it even even when people you know are getting anxious and 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 people start to get a little edgy and you know things don't quite go the way they want them to go and, and so on um it's just all part of saying how important westminster is to the sport as a whole and and i love that we all come together and have that 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 one universal connection 
really yeah. truly is Westminster. And, um, and I love that. I absolutely love it. Um, one final question, Sarah. Hi, Sarah wants to know when the, um, judging schedule is going to be up. Yeah, that's the um, judging program would be, should be out within the week. Um, those were all completed. And as I said earlier, the packets are being Yeah, packets stuffed. are going out. So I figured it had to be pretty soon, but it's not up on the yeah. website yet. Okay. Yeah, all we right. won't post it until it's ready to go out. Um, or just so there's no confusion. Perfect. perfect, perfect. Okay. Well, I feel like we have nailed this to the ground. And um, <laughs> hi, Dr. Darren. Um, and I am excited to see all my people. I'm super excited to see you at the garden at Westminster Kennel Club. <laughs> I'm never going to not be able to do it. Damn it. <laughs> well, who, who knows? Who knows? Maybe it'll be the right thing to say again soon. How about that? <laughs> it, is, it is what it is, man. I, can't, I just can't. Anyway, yeah. thanks a lot, Don. Y'all have a great night. Peace out, everybody. Thank Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.